Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Aruba Instant On. I wanna thank Aruba for sending me out some gear. They did not pay me for this video and all the thoughts are my own. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put the link in the description below. Aruba sent me one 24 port PoE switch, one Wi-Fi 6 access point and one Wi-Fi 5 access point. Let's take a closer look at what they sent me. First piece of equipment we have up is the Aruba Instant On 24 port PoE switch. The model number is JL683A and this switch is $643 MSRP Canadian. This is a layer two gigabit PoE plus switch and we have our 24 one gigabit ports across the top. And then on the side, we have 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. On the side, we have status light indicators. We have an LED mode and then we have a reset button. And on the back, we have our power input. The switch could be managed by the Aruba Instant On mobile app or cloud-based web portal. It also has an option to be managed through a local web GUI and it has a limited lifetime warranty. Next up, we have the Aruba AP15 access point. This access point is $286 MSRP Canadian, and it supports WPA2 and WPA3. On the back, we have our one gigabit ethernet port with PoE support 802.3 AF. We also have a DC power 12 volt input. This access point is dual radio for simultaneous dual band operations, 5 gigahertz, 802.11 AC by 4x4 multi-in, multi-out, with a wireless data rate of up to 1733 megabits per second. On the 2.4 gigahertz, we're 2x2 multi-in, multi-out with up to 300 megabits per second data rate. And this is managed by the Aruba Instant On cloud app or cloud web interface. And the next access point we're going to be looking at is the Aruba Instant On AP22. This is a 802.11 AX Wi-Fi 6 access point and it comes in at a price of $286 MSRP Canadian. On the back we have our 1 gigabit uplink that supports PoE in 802.3 AF. We also have a 12 volt power input. This supports WPA2 and WPA3. It has dual band operations on the 5 gigahertz 802.11 AX 2x2 multi-user multi-in multi-out with a data rate up to 1.2 gigabits per second. On the 2.4 gigahertz we have 2x2 multi-in multi-out with a data rate of up to 574 megabits per second and this is managed by the Aruba Instant On cloud management. Now that we've gone over the specs of all the Aruba gear, let's see how this is wired together. So I'm using my UDM Pro to create the networks in VLANs as the Aruba line doesn't have a firewall or router. So at the top we have my UDM Pro and it's connecting to my ISPs and then we have my USW aggregation. From there we're using a DAC cable that's going over to the Aruba Instant On switch. From the instant on switch, we have two cables going to their access points. The networks that I've created within the unified dream machine is the Aruba LAN at 192.168.111.1/24, and that's using VLAN 111. And then we have a guest at 192.168.112.1/24, and that's VLAN 112. And then we have staff on 192.168.111.1/24 on VLAN 113. So our next step, we need to get all these devices adopted into the Aruba Instant On cloud controller. To get to the cloud portal, all you need to do is type in portal.arubainstanton.com and then we could log in. If you're new to Aruba Instant On, we could sign up in the top right corner. I've already signed up, so I'm going to put my credentials in and then get into the controller. Now we're logged into the controller, we need to set up a new site, so I'll press continue. And now it says getting started. Select the type of devices that will be used in your network, an access point, a switch, or access point and switch, which we have both, and then we'll press continue. And now there's two different ways to set up our connectivity. If your instant on is behind a router or gateway, we'd select the top one. If it's directly connected to your ISP modem, we would select the bottom one. I'm connected to a gateway, so we'll press continue. Now it's saying to plug in all our devices, which we've already done, so we'll press step completed. Now it says standby. After a few minutes, your instant on devices will be ready to be discovered. When the lights are alternating between green and amber, so we'll press continue. 
Now we could add a device by adding the serial number. So I'll do that and then we'll press search for devices. Here we could see all three of our devices are showing up. So our AP22, our AP15, and our Aruba Instant On Switch, and we'll press add devices. Now it's saying set up your network. We'll create a Aruba LAN network. So we'll call it Aruba and then LAN, and then we'll create a password of test1234 and then press continue. Here it's asking us to select our country. I'm in Canada and I'll activate the site. Now it's saying that Aruba LAN is now active and your network is being configured and we'll press continue. Now our Aruba LAN site has been created and if we ever need to create another site, we could go up to the top right corner and then we could set up a new site. For now, we're just gonna leave it at this one site. On the main dashboard, we could see a couple things. We have our networks, then we have our clients. Below that, we have applications where we could see some analytical data. And on the bottom right hand corner, we could see our inventory. So let's go check that out. At the top, we have our AP15 access point, then we have our AP22 and then our Aruba switch. If we click on the AP15 access point, showing the MAC address, the serial number, the model and the version that this access point is sitting on. Under connectivity, it's showing it's on the local network and it's uplinked to our Aruba Instant On switch. It's getting an IP address of 192.168.111.199. We could also see on the side the radios that nobody is connected to the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz. Right now we don't have any clients connected. Under connectivity, we could either assign it with a DHCP address or a static IP address. And then under ports, we could see some statistics for the upload and download speeds. Under radios, we could change the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz band if we wanna use different channels by selecting use specific configuration for this radio. If we click on that under the 2.4, we change the channel width from 20 megahertz to 20 or 40. And we could also select the channels 1, 6 or 11. Below we see the transmit power and by default they have it on max. If we look at the 5 gigahertz, we could change the channel width from 20 slash 40 to 20, 40 or 80 megahertz. And then we have channel selection 36, 52, 100, 116, 132 and 149. And the power yet again is set to max. Under actions, there's a few things we could do. We could turn the locate light on if we need to locate the access point. We could do a network connectivity test. So let's do that right now. Here we could select the source, so we could either choose which AP or a switch, and then we could choose an IP or a host name. I just have the Cloudflare DNS server in here, and then we'll start connectivity test. Left hand side, you could see reachability in progress, and then you could say good. Fast connectivity to IP 1.1.1.1, and then we could see our round trip time. We could also restart this access point, or we could remove from inventory, so that would take it out of the cloud controller. Up at the top right, we have this little wrench. And if we click on that, we could customize what it shows us. So right now, by default, it has the name, the state, the state duration, the model, the clients. If we wanted, we could have it show the IP address, the MAC address, and the serial number, as well as the different clients on the different radios. On the AP22, we have the same settings. We can take a look at the identification, the connectivity, ports, radios, and actions. Now let's take a look at our Aruba switch. Under identification, we could see the device name, which we could switch. We could see the MAC address, the switch model, and the version of firmware that it's currently running. Like the access points, we could see the connectivity. And then on the right-hand side, we could see the power over ethernet statistics. So the total budget is 195 watts, and what we're using is 11 watts. Under connectivity, we could either set this switch with a static IP or DHCP, and then we have an option for routing. If we select this, we could allow routing between networks. If we take a look at our ports, we could see all of our 28 ports. The ones on our right are our 10 gig SFP plus uplink. We're uplinking to the USW aggregation. Ports one and three are connected to my access points. If we click on a port, we could give the port a port name. It's showing no link currently because there's nothing plugged into port two. And then we could set authentication and security. By default, there is no port based security, but we could put an 802.1x authentication or client based authentication. In the middle, we have included networks. So untagged network is our Aruba LAN. That's gonna be kind of our management LAN. We're gonna to have to specify some VLANs a little later on in this video. Clients and devices on this port, right now it's set to all networks. And then we have power management. Determine how the power budget is allocated to this port. So we could do usage or we could do power class. We could also set a port priority. By default, it's set to low, but you could have it on high or critical. We also have a power schedule. So if we click on edit site power schedule, we could select the days of the week that the POE is active. So by default, it's all day 24 seven. 
But if we only wanted it powered Monday to Friday, we could deselect Saturday and Sunday, and then we could say active between these hours. So the start time is 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So the PoE will only be on during those times, saving some power. If we take a look at network, right now it's just gonna show us our switch with our Aruba LAN, and we can see that all the ports are untagged. Taking a look under link aggregation, we could add a link aggregation and then specify which ports we want to participate in that. Under actions, we have the same as the access points. We could locate the switch, we could do network test, we could restart, we could change the switch to manage it locally instead of on this cloud controller, and we could remove it from the inventory. And under tools, we could set up port mirroring if we would like. Okay, now let's set up both of our networks. So we have the guest and we have the staff network that we need to create. So we'll go to the top left hand pane and click on networks. Here we already have a Aruba LAN wired network created and a wireless network. So we're going to add a new network. Here it's going to be wired and we'll call it guest. Below that we're going to give it the guest VLAN ID which is 112. If we wanted this to be a voice network, we could click this radio button. Under network access, we have a couple different toggle switches. So we have unrestricted access. So wired clients will be able to access any destination available to this network. Restricted access, wired clients connected to a port where the specific network only is included will be allowed to reach the internet in specific destinations below. So we're gonna have this as restricted access as it's a guest network. Under network security, we have network security protections. This network is not protected against DHCP or ARP attacks. If we click on the radio button, it will say this network is protected against DHCP and ARP attacks. Under the network assignments for our guests, we need to specify all tagged and then deselect the ports that we don't want. So the only ports that I want to be tagged are port one, three, and 25. So I need to deselect all of these and then press save. And now we can see that the new network guest was created, the type is wired and the status is active and it's on VLAN 112. Now we got to create a Wi-Fi guest network. So we'll click on add and this time we're going to select wireless. Usage, we have two different types. We have employee or we have guest. This one is our guest and we'll select a network name and I'll call it guest. Below that we have our security, so it could be open, a portal, or a password. We're going to use a password and we're going to select WPA or WPA3 personal. Under the network password, I'm going to do a simple password of test1234. Then we could take a look at the options. Here we could either show the network or hide the network and then below that we have Wi-Fi 6. So if we have any Wi-Fi 6 access points, which the AP22 is, we would want this selected. We could optimize the Wi-Fi network for video streaming and we could limit the bandwidth usage. So I'm going to select that as it's a guest network and they give you a couple of preset options. So we could do it based on client. We could give them one megabit, five, 10 or 25. We'll give them 10 or we could do it based on the whole network. If we select that, we could say our downstream megabits per second or our upstream megabits per second. So I'm going to do it by client at 10 megabits per second. Under our IP network assignment, by default, it specifies a wireless network for us on the 172.16 network. We're going to use same as local network, and then we're going to specify our guest wired network that we just created. Then on the right hand side, we could choose which radios it's using. By default, it uses the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz, but we could have it specified the 2.4 or the 5 only. Under schedule, we could set up a Wi-Fi schedule. So we could have it going all day, Monday to Friday, and have it deactivated on Saturday, Sunday. And we could also have it specify which time we want it activated. We're just gonna leave it on 24 seven for now. As this is a guest network, we're gonna restrict the access. And now we're gonna press save. Under the options as well, we have applications. And here we could specify if we want to allow use. So for adult content, business and economy, education, explicit content, gaming, and so on, we could either allow the use or we could disallow the use. Now we need to create a network for our staff. So we're gonna press add, and it's gonna be a wired network with the network name of staff. The VLAN ID is gonna be 113. The network access for this is gonna be unrestricted and we would do our firewall rules in our firewall. Network settings, we'll select the network settings protection. Under the network assignments for staff, we wanna have them all tagged, and then we need to deselect all the ports that we don't want tagged. We only want ports one, three, and 25 to be tagged with this VLAN right now. Now we need to add a Wi-Fi network for the staff. So we'll go wireless, and it's gonna be the usage of employee, and the network will be staff. 
We're going to use a password with WPA2 and WPA3 personal of test1234. Under options, we're going to show the network and we're going to have the Wi-Fi 6 turned on. We're not going to limit bandwidth usage for this network. Under IP and network assignment, we're going to have it specified under the staff VLAN and we're going to use both of the radios. We're not going to have a Wi-Fi schedule on and it's going to have unrestricted access. And then we'll press save to create the staff network. One thing I forgot to mention at the very beginning, you're going to want to turn on two-factor authentication. And how we do that, we go up to our account and then we go to account management. Under here, we're going to want to select two-factor authentication and set up 2FA. We need to put in our password and then validate the password. Once that's done, a QR code will come up and you need to scan that with your authentication app. So I tried connecting to the Wi-Fi and I was unable to, I wasn't getting any DHCP. So there's one more place that we could look to see if the ports are tagged. So we could go to our inventory and then click on our switch. Under the switch, we could select networks and here we could see the port status for each network. So our Aruba LAN, we could see ports 1, 3, and 25 are untagged. But if we take a look and go to the guest, we could only see port 1 and 3 that's tagged and port 25 isn't. Same with the staff. So we need to get that uplink port tagged. So if we go back to ports and then select port 25, we could see below the included networks. The untagged network is our Aruba LAN and then our tagged networks, we don't have guest or staff specified. So we're going to click on both of those and then press save. Now I'm connected to the guest Wi-Fi. We could see that down here on the right hand corner. It says guest. So let's do a speed test to make sure that it's only giving us 10 megabits per second. So I'm going to press go on our speed test. And you can see the bandwidth usage limiter is working. We're getting 9.71 down and 9.89 up. Now I have my iPhone connected to the staff network and this iPhone supports Wi-Fi 6. So we'll press go on the speed test. And we're getting pretty good speeds. We're getting 426 megabits per second down and 364 up. I'm going to end up doing a full benchmarking video with all my Wi-Fi 6 capable access points. And that will be in a few weeks. My thoughts on Aruba Instant On, I think it's a pretty good platform. It's very easy to set up and manage. There's not too much complexity with it. So if you're an MSP, this would be a really great product to use. I'll end up doing more videos about Aruba Instant On. If you guys have any questions about Aruba Instant On, leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.